Good morning. We are here this morning uh, with Daniel Antcliffe from Your Block. I'm Rebecca Hope from Block News. And we are talking a bit about your company and um, what it's doing to shape our data. Welcome, firstly. Yeah. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, and uh, I would love to know more about what exactly you guys do. Data is a huge issue right now. Um, so explain to us what's, what the, the company is about. Okay, well, I'll put it as simply as possible, and I'll ask you the question. Do you have a drawer at home or a file, if you need and tidy, that you keep all of your bills, uh, your car insurance, your home insurance, your utility bills, such as your gas, your electric, TV and broadband, mobile phone, all of that post that comes through the door that you open, you shove in a drawer, that you should really keep an eye on, but you don't. I have it all in a suitcase. I'm a bit disorganized. But... <laughs> Okay, yes. so you've got it all, and you, you get emails with PDFs of all of those bills as well. Yes. Uh, and, your bank, and your bank accounts with all of your statements and stuff like that. So imagine now if you could put all of those bills uh, in an app or on your PC that files them away, it takes all of the key data. So let car insurance is uh, my background uh, for the last couple of years. Yes. So if you take car insurance, you take your, your certificate, there's a lot of personal information on that. There's where you live, your date of birth, your vehicle, and that's got a lot of uh, important information in, um, how many c claims and convictions you might have. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know the underwriting criteria in South Africa, but I know UK. So just think of all that information, that, that lovely private information that you've got. And in the UK, uh, I don't know how aware of uh, the UK comparison websites you are, um, we compare quotes. So we'll type all of that lovely information into a comparison website, which will then spit that out, and it will bring back hundreds of quotes for you. And predominantly, those people will go with the cheapest. But all of that data then is shared. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what platforms it's on. Um, a lot of people will use multiple comparison websites, so they won't take the first one, they'll go to another. Yes. They might be a bit naughty and they might not tell the truth, the first quote, because they know that they'll be passed through to the actual insurer. So it's things like that. So what we're trying to do is give you, the consumer, uh, a, nice, a nice, safe, secure platform yes. to store all of that data. And then once it's all in... Um, so you may be able to take a picture of it. We're going to use things like optical character recognition mm -hmm. and intelligent character recognition. So it will pull the data off for you. So you won't have to pre-type uh, because we know people make mistakes when they're typing in. And we want to keep the data as clean as possible because that helps the insurers, the energy companies, those right. people give you a really good, accurate accurate quote. Now so what, all the data's in. What makes the system oh, so safe and trustworthy as opposed to others? Um. I don't, you can't guarantee safe and trustworthy, uh, you know, even blockchain. But w we think that by holding it in blockchain on a private blockchain uh, will give us more security, will give you um, the visibility and the reassurance that your data is where you said it is. Uh, it's immutable once it's in. Um, so, yeah, uh, we've got a, a, an advisor uh, in the UK, Andy Haig, and his company is the CyberFort Group. Uh, and he runs a company called The Bunker, which is, uh, if you want to see how secure um, your data could be, then that's worth looking at, The yes. Bunker. Yes. Uh, so, you know. So that's, a, that's great. Now, tell us about why, what was the, the reason for starting this? What did you see? What problem did you see in the market? Uh, well, the idea came about five years ago uh, when I was working at the company in the UK. So I was IT development manager, so I was helping bring their IT infrastructure up to speed. Mm -hmm. uh, and to do that, I had to sit with the end users of the current uh, administration platform. And we had a claims handling and customer service department. So I would sit there and listen to how the claims and the yes. customer service that, uh, handlers handle you as a consumer. And nine out of 10 times, they would ask the consumer for a policy number or for some uh, information regarding the policy that they had taken up. These were car warranties or uh, another ancillary type insurance product. And the consumer would come back and say, I can't remember my policy number. I don't know where my policy certificate is. Mm -hmm. So you'd hear them run off. They'd try and search through the suitcase or the drawer where they think they had a bill um, or that information, the policy certificate. and 
uh, the idea sort of came to me, uh, I think it was about three o'clock in the morning, uh, and I wrote myself a note on my mobile phone, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could have an online platform where we could store all of this information and then quickly be able to pass all, not pass the information out, but get quotes securely back from insurers, utility mm-hmm. companies and things like that. So it's, right. yeah, it's about storing your personal data. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, so what do you feel is the, the market size for you at the moment, or where would you like to be in, in a few years? Well, the, the current market, our first market to try and crack would be the UK. So in the UK, there's uh, four or five of the top comparison websites. Mm-hmm. So you've got Money Supermarket, Go Compare, Confuse.com, uh, and uh, I can't remember the four. You've got U-Switch and Compare the Market. So they, they have market share. Um, so 12 million car insurance policies I think were done through an aggregator website and wow. the average com- commission to that aggregator is around £50 pounds. so our idea wow. through yeah it's, so it's about you know over £500 million pounds a year in commission for those aggregators and then if you consider gas and electricity switching I think around 8 million households switched last year at £30 pound commission so another 300 million, so it's big business big and commission. <laughs> Quite yeah, a, big there's market. a big market. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to reward the consumer back. Yes. So that commission we, we get, we're going to give uh, a token or a percentage back to the consumer in tokens so that then they'll be able to use those tokens to go on and get other products. So maybe they get um, 30 pounds worth of your block tokens uh, for purchasing the car insurance, so they'll be able to use those then to discount their home insurance. And we have to keep the ecosystem with the token. Uh, so why did you decide that? to do this, this decentralized model? I mean, you know, most, most people would want to take in on those, get in on those profits. So why, did you, why was this so important for you? Um, well, I think data is a big aspect at the moment, especially around Europe with the uh, GDPR coming into force at the back end of May. Um, and a lot of people are focusing on how Facebook have, uh, you know, destroyed the trust and shared data and stuff like that. But, a lot of people are missing the fact that every day, as consumers, we put a hell of a lot of information just to get our car insurance or our home insurance right. or to find out how much our gas and electric is. And those bills that we throw away in a drawer inevitably end up in the garbage and in a trash can. And that can then be used to get, you know, identity theft. Uh, so we feel that by putting it on the blockchain, making it a secure ecosystem where the insurer doesn't even know who you are, you will essentially become a number to your insurer. So if they phone you up, rather than them having to confirm who you are, you should be confirming who they are. It's, you know, it's flipping, flipping it sort of, you know, know who the yes. company is you're dealing with, not know your customer. Mm-hmm. Uh, banks and stuff like that as well, you, right. you know, they ask you to go through security questions mm-hmm. when... They should know who you are. Yes. It seems that um, car insurance is, is your entry point into the market, right? It's, or it sounds uh, like... car, Yeah, car insurance, because a, a number of the team uh, are from that industry. Um, but we've got other team members who are connected into the mobile phone network, yes. utility, uh, you know, your gas and electric. So we're hoping to get a broad... Um, Spectrum. A broad... Yeah, a broad spectrum of products that we can offer to our clients. And it's not just about blockchain. This, this will be uh, about AI as well. Yes. So the, the front end will be uh, Dave and you. So Dave will be your AI assistant. So he'll be the one telling you when your car insurance is ready for renewal. He'll go off and get the quotes without you doing anything uh, and bring you back all that lovely data. So he'll be telling you through uh, one of the mm-hmm. speakers in the morning how much you've spent, stuff like that. We're looking at a PSD2 license to be able to draw down uh, banking inf- information and give you give the consumer a good dashboard of mm-hmm. how much they're spending a month uh, and how much they can save. Mm-hmm. So there seems to be quite a lot of hype around data protection and I don't know if that's mainly coming from governments who are not liking the fact that information is stored by uh, other parties or if it's actually from the people, I guess, a lot of it is from the people that they're concerned. Um, and, and the kinds of information that would be hosted on your blog would be really personal. So what would you say to the user to, to understand you know, the nature of this, this kind of um, industry or how data is stored? 
Um, well, our, ours uh, will be a different offering because this this essentially will be your digital filing cabinet. It'll, it, it will it will be that drawer or suitcase you've got at home where you keep all of your bills. You know, it's not it's not owned by us. You're uh, just your, providing the technology. Yeah, we're providing the technology and giving you the chance then through a tokenized mechanism, the YBK, uh, to get discounts on those products. And right. we hope that by mass adoption, we can then hopefully get insurers to give you a discount and then use the token to get a discount as well. Because the data that we'll be giving them will obviously be a lot more uh, honest and clean than some of the aggregator sites where on a daily basis they get a lot of what are called aspirational quotes. Mm -hmm. That people have on the lunch break, mm -hmm. daydreaming about that Ferrari and how much it would cost to insure a Ferrari. So they go off and get a quote for a right. Ferrari. But that data does get passed on and get quoted. So, okay. yeah. We're so, hoping to make it more secure and transparent. Let's talk a bit about the technology itself and, and the architecture of it. Um, could you walk us through that, how it's been designed? Well, we're, we're going to have, yeah, ours is a private blockchain um, to, to start. So we've got an application uh, layer. Uh, we've got the private data store layer. So that will store all the confidential data and the business logic. Um, and then that will be configured to auto hash transactions set onto the public blockchain, onto the Ethereum network. Um, and then we've got the public blockchain layer, which stores pointers and hashes that don't disclose any of the personal data to the public, but it rather uh, allows the users who know which addresses to track for a new hash to receive notifications of the right. status of change, of entry, yeah made to the data store layer and validate the integrity of the data in the private store layer as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's... But, but the technology... So you're using ICOs, right? Yes. We're, yeah, we're currently uh, in the process of an ICO. Okay. And how's that going? Or what? Um, yeah, slowly. The market uh, is hurting us at the moment. And I think, you know, the, the, the news of how many ICOs have failed and the scams and... Uh, which is a good thing, though. You know, people are more aware. They need to be more trustworthy, and uh, you know, not just uh, base. You know, not not just purchase tokens based on a white paper. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I've always said I'd rather talk to everybody who's looking to purchase a token, so I can talk them through how the platform will work, the size of the market we're looking to do, and what we're generally uh, trying to achieve by by bringing this. Uh, onto blockchain and using the tokenized mechanism, using the tokens, you know. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, it, wow. it's a difficult place to be at the moment. It's a difficult place and it's a huge topic of discussion is data, um, data protection. And, and with blockchain, I think it's going to be maybe a challenge to get people to understand what's actually going on because people tend to think that, oh, that website owns my content or that was a, a huge thing in the um, Facebook hearing, especially with, you know, Mark Zuckerberg yeah. and about the questions were kind of like, well, what are you doing with, our, is it yours? Is it ours? And yeah. you try to make it clear it is yours and you're giving, you're giving access to Facebook. So there's like a, a misconception in the um, data protection, but at the end of the day, you're there to help people organize their files um, and to make yeah. the process easier. That's the point. Yeah, right? it, it, this is, this will be the freedom of choice for the consumer. We will make sure that whenever you take up a, product or service that we automatically opt you out of any marketing so that you're not bombarded with emails and phone yes. calls none of your personal data will be passed to them so they won't even know uh, your full address they won't know your phone number so they won't be able to market to you so we, we don't want you being bombarded anymore that's your freedom of choice yes uh, we're just giving you the tools to keep yourself private which if you want to do that you can do and i think consumers rather than not understanding it, they're, they're becoming more aware and more educated on yes. how much their data is worth. You know, uh, a lot of people have made a lot of money from and your that's data. That's why it is by, important by, to have your own your own entity, and that's why it is important to have a technology which allows you to to take care of your data yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we think because that filing cabinet you have at home with all those pieces of paper, and that's essentially you looking after your data. Yeah. It's your responsibility, uh, not the owner of the houses. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah exactly. So, so, so now, sorry, no. um, I was just yeah, going to say we're going to find out a bit more about uh, the team in closing. Just 
understand um, who's all involved. You said you had someone in Ghana, which was really interesting, South Africa, all these places. So could you yeah, explain yeah, yeah. to us? Well, the the main uh, team is myself, my father, and my brother. So my father's family the chief business. financial officer. It, it is a family business. Uh, I worked for my father in the company in the UK uh, for nearly 10 years. Okay. Um, and he's still... Uh, he's nearly 17 and he's still running uh, a large uh, company in the UK and they carry a, a number of large brands mm -hmm. um, and his background's accountant see? so he's he's good with the financials and our business plans and okay. making sure and from a regulatory standpoint as well you know we're well aware of the FDA and regulators yes. because from the coming from the insurance especially sector especially in the UK <laughs> especially in the UK well yeah. Angie Brolter you know, regulation is something yeah. that we uh, are keen to make sure everybody's aware that we're, we're following. We want to tick the boxes that maybe aren't there yet. Yeah. As, as this space isn't regulated uh, at the moment. And then you have uh, a team my, also abroad, right? Uh, well, we've got, uh, I've got legal, in-house legal. He's based in Gibraltar. Um, I've got, uh, the developers were outsourcing development because i see a, a startup a true startup um it's a heavy cost to carry yes. a full development team in hand so to get us into the beta test and the live environment we're going to outsource uh, right. the development of course. in that period we can then look to hire in our own developers but for, for the cost effectiveness it's uh, we think it's best placed mm -hmm. with somebody like gigster who we've worked we've been talking to for the last two years we've created a very in-depth scoping document uh, and develop, development document. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the development in all of this, the technology is moving that quick. Uh, we we didn't want to, want to yeah. yeah, we didn't want to develop out an MVP at this stage because yeah. you just, it's a moving target. Uh, yeah. And you could burn a, we could burn a lot of money trying to get to that stage with it moving constantly. So, yeah. You've got to be, um, you've got to be cautious and you've got to choose wisely um, and all those things. So uh, please go check out yourblock.io. Um, thank you so much for talking with us today, Daniel. It's been a, a you, pleasure Rebecca. to hear about your protection of, well, you're giving us the access to, to managing our own data, right? Yeah, so essentially, yeah. That, that is that's the what, step forward. It. Thank you very much for, for joining me. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks for your time. Yes, I'm Rebecca Hope from Block News. We'll see you again. Thank you.